Hello. Welcome to Afternoon Adventures with the Chesapeake Public Library. My name is Ms. Hannah. I work at the Greenbrier Branch. Today we're talking about letters and using those letters to make something very special, your name. So the books that we're going to read today and the crafts that we're going to complete together all have to do with your name. Today we're going to read an annoying ABC by Barbara Botner, Alma and How She Got Her Name by Juana Martinez Neal, and The Name Jar by Yang Suk Choi. For our craft, we are going to use this strip of black paper to create a beautiful name sign that you can hang around your house, maybe on your bedroom door. Miss Joanne is going to help us create this craft. Come on in, Miss Joanne. <laughs> so, the other thing we're going to make for our craft is called an acrostic poem. Now, an acrostic poem is when you take the letters of your name and write them down the side of a piece of paper like this. So here we have the name Sam, S-A-M. And then you pick one word or phrase that describes you or that is something you like to do and that starts with the letter in your name and you write it out across the page like this. An acrostic poem doesn't have to rhyme and it doesn't even really have to make sense. If it's just one word for each letter, that's fine. So here we have Sam, super cool, always fun, my best friend. That's an acrostic poem for the word Sam. So let's get started. First we're gonna read our books and then we're gonna do our crafts with Miss Joanne. An Annoying ABC by Barbara Botner. It was a quiet morning until Adelaide annoyed Bailey. Bailey blamed Clyde. Clyde cried. Dexter drooled on Eloise. Eloise elbowed Flora. Flora fumed. Grover grabbed Horace, who howled at Ida, which irritated Joshua, who jabbed Kirby. Kirby kicked Leroy. Leroy completely lost it. And then lied to Miss Mabel. My, 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 muttered Miss Mabel. Nigel nudged Olivia. Olivia overreacted. Petunia pestered Quentin. Quentin quarreled with Roland. Roland rumbled. Stella stumbled. Todd tumbled and upended Ursula. Vera vocalized. Winthrop wept. Xavier exploded. Eves yelled. And then Zelda zapped Adelaide. Astonishing! Zelda? Adelaide started it, but then Adelaide apologized. Everyone apologized. And then Adelaide, Bailey, Clyde, Dexter, Eloise, Flora, Grover, Horace, Ida, Joshua, Kirby, Leroy, Miss Mabel, Nigel, Olivia, Petunia, Quentin, Roland, Stella, Todd, Ursula, Vera, Winthrop, Xavier, Eves, and Zelda had a quiet afternoon. 
mostly the and Alma and how she got her name by Juana Martinez Neal. Alma, Sofia, Esperanza, Jose, Pura, Candela had a long name. Too long, if you asked her. My name is so long, Daddy. It never fits, Alma said. Come here, he said. Let me tell you the story of your name. Then you decide if it fits. Sophia was your grandmother, he began. She loved books, poetry, jasmine flowers, and of course, me. She was the one who taught me how to read. I love books and flowers, and you too, Daddy. I am Sophia. Esperanza was your great-grandmother, he continued. She hoped to travel, but never left the city where she was born. Her only son grew up to cross the seven seas. Wherever her sailor son went, so did Esperanza's heart. The world is so big. I want to go see it, Daddy. You and me together. I am Esperanza. Jose was my father, Alma's daddy said. He was an artist with a big family, like many people had back then. Early each morning, he walked to the mountains and the plazas to paint everyday life. Sometimes I went along. Your grandfather taught me to see and love our people. I wake up early every day, and I draw a lot too. This morning, I drew a kitty cat for you, Daddy. I am Jose. Pura was your great aunt. She believed that the spirits of our ancestors are always with us, watching over us. When you were born, she tied a red string around your wrist, a charm to keep you safe. Hello, Pura. It's me, Alma. Candela was your other grandmother. She always stood up for what was right. I am Candela. I love the story of my name. Now tell me about Alma, Daddy. Where does that come from? I picked the name Alma just for you. You are the first and the only Alma. You will make your own story. Alma, Sofia, Esperanza, Jose, Pura, Candela. That's my name and it fits me just right. I am Alma and I have a story to tell. The End The Name Jar by Yang Suk Choi. Through the school bus window, Yoon Hae looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Yoon Hae's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name? Yoon Hae had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers around the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yoon Hae, surprising her. Yoon Hae looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Yoon Hae answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. 
Yunhei, said Yunhei. Unei, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, ooh, unei, some kids chanted. No, no, Yunhei corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Yunhei. Oh, it's you hey, the boy said. Like you, hey. What about hey, you? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Yun hey hurried to get off. You hey, bye bye, the kids yelled as she left. Yun hey felt herself blush. Yun hey stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? asked the curly-haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? He asked cheerfully. Yun Hei nodded, and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher Mr. Kokotos almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotos thanked him and greeted Yun Hei. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yun Hei smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Yun Hei pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokoto showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Yoon Hae kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yoon Hae? Her mother asked her, when she walked in, did you understand the teacher? Yun Hei simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you are a good Korean. I will, replied Yun Hei, but, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Yun Hei is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Yun Hei complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Yun Hei, her mother said, and that's a good thing. Yun Hei just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yun Hei and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean style spicy pickled cabbage and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Yun Hei's favorite, for soup. It made Yun Hei smile. Just because we moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Yun Hei. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Yun Hei nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said, and what is your name? Yun Hei, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Yun Hei nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Yun Hei. That evening, Yun Hei stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Ha he ma nem id shusi, 
she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when Yuhei arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Yunhei took one out and read it aloud. Daisy. That's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Yunhei took out the rest of the paper. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Yunhei nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Yunhei's face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all and you'll have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Yunhei looked out of the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Yunhei turned around to see the curly haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you, don't you have any name? Yunhei thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey, and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Yunhei said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day the jar got fuller with more names and Yunhei read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When Yunhei got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, To my Yunhei. I hope you're enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Yunhei, your grandmother forever. Yunhei took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Yunhei walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Yunhei. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yunhei replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Unhee? he asked with his eyes open wide. Yunhei looked quickly at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yunhei, and it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yunhei, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It made Yunhei smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Yunhei, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Yunhei came to class early to look at the names one last time. But the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper. Paper with a name on it. Yunhei slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Yunhei said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokoto's desk or on any other desk. And it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Kokotos came in and Ralph shouted at him, The name jar is gone, the jar with all the names in it. 
gone? Mr. Kokotos replied. With a look of concern, he asked Yunhei, did you get a chance to read all the names? Yunhei nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Yunhei wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I liked the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class, but I realized that I like my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yunhei means grace. Grace, Yunhei, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Yunhei, Yunhei, Yunhei. Yunhei said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better, even Mr. Kokotos. They applauded Yunhei's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yunhei. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotos reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yunhei heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye, Yunhei. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Yunhei. Yunhei said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Yunhei, Yunhei, come downstairs, mother called up to Yunhei. Your friend is here. Yunhei rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? asked Yunhei breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? he asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir. Yunhei said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Yunhei. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chinku, read Yunhei. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back. The end. Hi everyone, this is Miss Joanne and I work at Greenbrier Library and we're gonna do our craft on our name today. And so I'm gonna show you how to do your name craft to remember that all the parts that you need for this craft you can pick up from Greenbrier Library. We will give you the black piece of paper and strips of colors so that you have that for your name. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your, when you get it home, you're going to take your black strip of paper and you are going to write your name with a pencil as large as you can on your paper. And so my paper, I wrote my name on it and you're going to um, so write your name and then you're going to take the strips of paper and you can do whatever color combination you want. It's up to you. It's your name and your paper. So you're going to take the strip of paper and your scissors and you are going to cut little squares out of your colored strips so that you have colored tape strips, uh, colored squares so that you can put them down on your name. And when you're done gluing those down on your name, you can then decorate the sides of your paper too. So remember that you can, when you're done, um, you can put it on your door or maybe on the refrigerator or wherever else that maybe you can see in th that you'd like to put it. Um, I would ask first. But um, so that's our name craft, okay? So that's that one. And then remember, we talked about doing an acrostic poem today. And so I would like you to do an acrostic poem using your name again. And so remember, this is our sample um, that we use the name Sam. So we wrote the name Sam down the page and then we wrote descriptive words about Sam. So Sam, they said that Sam was super cool, always fun, and my best friend. And so when you do your name, you're going to think of all those things that can describe you and who you are from your letters of your name. I hope you have fun with that. Um, um, it's, it's a little tricky and it may take a while to remember those words. You may need to ask somebody for help too um, that can give you some words that start with the letters of your name. But see what you can come up with and I hope you really enjoy this. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye.